Imagine a place that could literally start at one end, trek over 1,800 miles straight to the west, and still be stuck under that massive canopy. This place is like a haven for all sorts of crazy creatures, hosting around 10% of the world's species. It's always been seen as this wild, untouched paradise where humans haven't messed things up yet. You know, like a glimpse into how the world used to be before we spread like wildfire across every continent, causing chaos everywhere. I'm talking about the Amazon region. That massive jungle turns out to be hiding some seriously cool secrets. For centuries, people have been talking about these lost cities deep within the forest. We're talking about El Dorado, the legendary city of gold that had Spanish explorers going crazy, venturing into uncharted territory never to return. And even in the 20th century, the adventurous Perry Fawcett went looking for the lost city of Z and disappeared into the jungle, leaving us all hanging. Scientists have actually found evidence that ancient cities did exist in the Amazon. But how did they find these hidden ruins in such a dense and remote forest? Well, they've got this awesome technology called LIDAR. Basically, they hopped into a helicopter and used light-based remote sensing to digitally strip away the canopy and reveal the ancient ruins of a massive urban settlement around Llanos de Mojos in the Bolivian Amazon. The place was once home to the Kasarabi culture, which thrived from 500 to 1400 CE. They had these incredible urban centers with huge platform and pyramid structures. They even had raised causeways connecting different suburban-like settlements spread across miles and miles of land. These guys were seriously ahead of their time, and they had an epic water control and distribution system with reservoirs and canals. So yeah, the Amazon rainforest wasn't just some untouched wilderness. It was actually heavily populated and even urbanized for centuries before recorded history of the region began. But the thing is, a bunch of people turned a blind eye to the fact that there were actually some pretty cool architectural sites lurking around here that totally deserve some exploring. Scientists predict that in the next 10 to 20 years, we're going to uncover a ton of these cities, and some might even be bigger than the ones we're talking about here. Michael Heckenberger, an anthropologist with the University of Florida, points out that we've seen some similar settlement features, like moats and causeways, in other parts of the ancient Amazon. This new research reveals something totally mind-blowing. Past examples of urbanism in the Amazon were more like groups of villages connected together, not quite what we'd call urban. You see, they were missing those fancy larger centers with their grand architecture and stuff. But guess what? Llanos de Mojos has got them. This place is the real deal when it comes to a fully urbanized Amazonian landscape. So, in the Llanos de Mojos region, a bunch of ancient settlements have been found. These were home to the Kasarabi people, who were all about hunting, fishing, and farming maize. We're talking about hundreds of sites spread across 1,700 square miles. But these sites were so remote and hidden in the tropical forest that it was like trying to find a proverbial needle in a haystack. A team of archaeologists weren't going to let that stop them, though. They decided to take to the skies and use some fancy LiDAR mapping technology. Just imagine an aircraft flying over the area, shooting out a bunch of infrared beams. These beams hit the ground and bounce back, giving us the distance to different objects. It's like creating a super detailed map from above. Using computer software, these genius scientists were able to strip away the trees from the images revealing the Earth's surface and all the ancient archaeological goodies hidden beneath. And boy, did they strike gold! They found a whopping 26 unique sites, including 11 that nobody even knew existed before. So what about these 26 super cool sites? Among them, we've got Landivar and Kotoka, which are like these huge urban centers. And get this, we already knew they existed. But the new maps revealed they cover one and a half and one half square miles, respectively. These centers are surrounded by moat and rampart fortifications, like something out of a medieval castle. And they've got all sorts of crazy stuff inside. We're talking artificial terraces, massive earthen platform buildings, and pyramids that reach over 70 feet tall. All these epic buildings are actually facing the north northwest. It's like they were trying to align themselves with the cosmos or something. This kind of cosmic worldview can be found in other ancient sites in the Amazon, too. 
Now, let's take a bird's eye view and strip away all those pesky trees. We can see these two centers in all their glory, and they're actually connected to a whole network of settlements through a bunch of causeways. Picture it like spokes on a wheel, stretching out for miles. Canals also stretch out from these main centers and connect to rivers and Laguna San Jose. It's like they had their own water delivery system going on. These ancient guys totally reshaped the whole landscape with their crazy cosmology. The only bummer is that their impressive architecture was made from mud brick. While it looked amazing back then, it just wasn't as durable as the limestone used by the Maya. What happened to the Kasarabi and their settlements is still a big mystery. But based on dating at the sites, it looked like they disappeared around 1400 CE, way before Europeans arrived in the Amazon. One theory is that a massive drought hit the region and messed everything up. The researchers found these massive water reservoirs at various sites, which is pretty interesting, considering how rainy the Amazon is known to be. Who knows if they were for drinking water or farming fish and turtles? But hey, severe droughts have happened in the past, and it only takes a couple of bad harvests to make people pack up and move on. What's even more interesting is that these communities thrived in the same area where this guy Fawcett we mentioned before went missing while searching for his lost city of Z. Maybe he was onto something after all. This is how it was. Fawcett stumbled upon this super cool document called Manuscript 512 at the National Library of Brazil. It's believed to have been written by a Portuguese explorer. Now, according to this document, back in 1753, a group of explorers discovered the remains of an ancient city. It had arches, a statue, and even a temple with hieroglyphs. But the document didn't spill the beans on where this city was located. So Fawcett got all hyped up about finding this city and made it his secondary mission after his main goal of finding something called Z. At one point, he had to come back to Britain to run some errands, but in 1920, he decided to give it another shot. Fawcett went on a personal expedition to find the city, but it was unsuccessful. Five years later, Fawcett, his son Jack, and their buddy Raleigh Rimmel disappeared in the Mato Grosso jungle. Some researchers think that Fawcett might have been influenced by info he got from indigenous folks about this place called Kohikagu. Turns out, Kohikagu was discovered by Westerners in 1925, and it had the ruins of 20 towns and villages. Up to 50,000 people might have lived here. And get this, the discovery of other earthworks in southern Amazonia totally supports Fawcett's theory. In 2005, an American journalist wrote an article about Fawcett's crazy expeditions and discoveries. He called it the Lost City of Z. Catchy, right? Well, in 2009, he turned that article into a book with the same name. And in 2016, the super-talented writer-director James Gray made it into a movie. Now, here's where things get a bit sad. The Amazon region is changing rapidly. Farming, ranching, and energy production are changing this incredible place. And guess what? Those untouched areas with ancient relics won't stay untouched for long. It's a race against time to document and preserve what's left of our past before it's lost forever. You're strapped in a boat cruising down the Amazon River with the sun scorching hot. As you check out your map, your boat starts rocking back and forth. The water is starting to get more intense, so you hang on for dear life. You tuck your map in your pocket and try to take control of your boat. You strike some jagged rocks and duck low to avoid tree branches. Your boat strikes a large rock out of nowhere and capsizes. You're swimming in the murky green water. While you're trying your best to get ashore, your boat gets washed away. Underneath the water lies a whole new world of bizarre and dangerous animals. Kandiru fish are snake-like creatures that can grow up to 16 inches long. Arapimus can weigh more than an adult male and are taller than most basketball players. They're the biggest freshwater fish in South America. They have a hybrid gill system that forces them to pop up to the surface every 5 to 15 minutes to breathe in oxygen for their large swim bladder. You swim out of the raging water and dry yourself off. Oh no, your map is completely soaked. There's no way you can get to your destination without it. You venture into the thick rainforest, shoving the branches and leaves away. 
As you get deeper, you notice something on a tree. It's barely moving, but it's got sharp claws and a raggedy coat. It stretches its arm to another branch and tries to pull itself up. Ever so slowly. Sloths sleep more than half their days and only head down from trees once a week. They're so motionless, they sometimes grow algae and moss on their fur. The rainforest gets denser with each step until there's barely any sunlight illuminating the path in front of you. You notice a figure following you. With every branch you step on, you can hear a faint sound right next to you creeping around. You start walking a bit faster and the sound catches up with you. You make it out of the dense part and tread along a narrow path until you reach a cliff. You can't walk normally here, so you pin against the wall and walk sideways to cross the hills. You slowly move across with the river 30 feet below you. You move your right foot and some rocks fall into the river. You keep going and misstep. You're about to fall, but you hold on to a large tree branch and pull yourself up. You notice a couple of colorful poison frogs inches away from your fingers. Touching any of these frogs can be extremely dangerous and harmful, despite their amazing color patterns. The golden poison frog is one of the most poisonous animals in the world. One of them hops right next to you, so you let go of the branch and fall back in the river. The river is washing you down until you reach a calm current. Underneath you is a swarm of piranhas swimming with their sharp teeth. The red color on their skin is unmistakable, so you swim off like an Olympic athlete. Piranhas will eat anything that gets in their way, no matter the size. You grip onto a log and climb up a small rock to catch your breath. There's a huge electric eel underneath the rock. Despite their name, they're more related to catfish than eels. They use their powerful 600 volts of electricity to defend themselves and catch food. You're stuck, unless you're like the common basilisk that can run on the water like a jet ski. These incredible lizards have special webbing on their toes and can run the distance of a basketball court. You hop on a bunch of rocks until you reach the land. You continue walking along the riverbank until you come across a moving rock. You rub your eyes and see it moving again. It's a dinosaur-looking turtle that resembles a crocodile with armor. The Mata Mata is a freshwater turtle that disguises itself with its surroundings to catch prey. Their heads stretch longer than their bodies. You shimmy your way past it and continue. You head back into the rainforest and find a spot to rest. Wait, there are giant ants everywhere! They're the biggest ants in the world and can produce one of the most painful stings out there, even comparable to a wasp's sting. You immediately get up and find another place to rest. As you continue walking along, you notice the same feeling of something following you. You can hear some leaves rustling, but it's getting dark and there's no way of telling. You find a nice little spot to build a campfire and catch some Zs, but in the Amazon, everything is a threat except for those cute capybaras wandering around. They live in groups next to water sources. They're also the biggest rodents in the world. You don't need to worry about them if you're stuck in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. Suddenly, you feel something slithering up next to you. You look down and see a massive green anaconda just about to constrict you. They are the heaviest snakes in the world and can grow up to 20 feet long and have a huge appetite. You get up and sprint your way out of there. All right, you found a decent cave to crash in. It's daytime again, and you're still alive. You continue walking along the rainforest. You were able to find some breakfast to boost your energy for the rest of the day. You spot something on a tree that looks like a branch, but it's actually a potu, a master of disguise that can spend days motionless on broken tree branches. These bizarre birds use those branches as their permanent home, where they lay their eggs and chill all day. You continue your way through the rainforest and see a Brazilian wandering spider crawling on a tree branch right in front of you. Eight of these species can be found in the Amazon area. They are some of the most aggressive and venomous spiders out there. So you make a big detour and walk away from it. You feel someone walking next to you again, but you still can't figure out what it is. You see a steep cliff with a waterfall hitting a large lake ahead of you. Looks peaceful, until you see a team of black caimans gathering around the shore. 
They're the biggest predators in the whole Amazon ecosystem and feed on anything that moves. It's a good thing you're on high ground. Otherwise, whoa! You slip and fall down the river, right on the deep end. So far, no caiman spotted you. You swim underwater and try to get to the opposite end of where the reptiles are. As you climb out and dry yourself off, you notice some large black spots on you. You try pulling them off, but they've latched on pretty hard. The Amazon giant leech finds its target by tracking movement and shadow. Once they attach themselves to the skin, it's extremely difficult to extract them. The best way to do so is to slide your finger next to its mouth and pull it off slowly. You manage to get them off your body and see that the caimans are swimming towards you. You're pinned to the wall with the lake of hungry reptiles approaching. Suddenly, a pink dolphin jumps out of the water and splashes all over them. They can grow larger than humans and are the celebrities of the Amazon. Scientists think they get their color from the blood capillaries on their skin. The Amazon even has bull sharks swimming around. These carnivorous giant fish are threatening to humans and can swim in both salt water and fresh water. These sharks prey on anything within their reach, including other sharks. The dolphin distracted the caimans, so you climb up the cliff and try to find the best way to escape. Opened jaws waiting for you to fall into the pit are right below you. You're lucky enough to escape to the top, but as your arms pull you up, the first thing that you see is a jaguar looking straight at you. It's the creature that's been following you this whole time. You get up while it starts circling you, timing its strike. You know that you can't take on a jaguar, nor can you outrun it, so you grab a large tree branch from the ground to defend yourself. It jumps at you, but you duck down in time. The jaguar lands in the water far away from the caiman crocs. It's a good thing these large kitties are excellent swimmers. You pick yourself up and continue. And to your surprise, you find your boat again. You fix it up and sail your way out of the Amazon. Whew. Okay, let's play a little guessing game, shall we? Can you name the sixth largest river on Earth in terms of volume? That's the amount of water that flows through a waterway. The first couple of rivers are easy to list. Number one, of course, is the Amazon River in South America. Then we have the Congo in Africa and the Ganges in India. Feel free to name all the rivers on the planet. You won't get any closer to the answer. Why? Because this river is not on the surface, but underneath the waves of the Black Sea. In 2010, a team of scientists discovered this river while studying the Bosphorus Strait in Turkey. Sonar scanning revealed a channel at the bottom of the Black Sea. The channel had water flowing through it. It turned out that at places, it's 115 feet deep. That's three times as tall as your average telephone pole. This flow of water acts like a real river. It has rapids and waterfalls, and its volume is 350 times greater than that of the River Thames in London. <laughs> Talk about a strong undercurrent. If it was a surface river, it would really be in the top 10. Bad news for the Madeira River in Bolivia and Brazil, the present number 6. But how did this underwater river form? The answer lies in the amazing features of the Black Sea. It gets its water from two main sources. The first are the rivers that flow into it, like the Danube, Dnieper, and Don. <laughs> a lot of Ds there. But more importantly, they are all freshwater waterways. On the other side, quite literally, there is the Mediterranean, and it's salty, like a lot. When this salt water gets inside the Black Sea, it goes straight to the bottom. You see, fresh water is lighter than salt water. This creates stratification. It's a fancy term that simply means that the two types of water don't mix together. Salt water has a higher density, so it drops right down to the bottom. If you want to see how that works, you can do an experiment at home. Pour mineral water into one cup and salt water into another. Table salt will do. Then put a grape in each cup. You'll see how it immediately sinks to the bottom of the cup filled with fresh water. The grape will stay afloat in the cup filled with salt water. The same thing is happening inside the Black Sea. But there is another side to this phenomenon. The upper layer of water is rich in oxygen. This means it can support life. 
The bottom layer, however, is anoxic. Yep, you guessed it. This means there is no oxygen at the bottom. But this isn't a bad thing. Because of this trait of the Black Sea, shipwrecks are able to survive for centuries. Oxygen decomposes wood. And from what material did the ancient people make their ships? That's correct, timber. Recently, in 2018, scientists discovered the oldest Greek shipwreck on Earth. The merchant ship lies more than a mile deep at the bottom of the sea. Experts estimate that the vessel is 2,400 years old. The wreck was valuable for historians to study all the elements of ancient ship construction. From the mast to the rowing benches, it's all intact. The wreck lies some 50 miles off the coast of Bulgaria, but no one has seen it in person. Explorers sent a deep sea ROV, or remotely operated vehicle, to film the wreckage. It was impossible for a diver to go down. Hmm, but the Black Sea doesn't look that huge on a map. Could it be that deep? Oh yes, it's way deeper than people think. You could stack six Empire State Buildings at the deepest point of the Black Sea, around 7,257 feet. This inland sea isn't the only place on Earth where researchers have discovered shipwrecks and underwater rivers. One of the largest channels running along the ocean floor lies off the coast of South America. It runs from the mouth of the mighty Amazon and into the Atlantic Ocean. Studying underwater rivers isn't an easy task. The depth and the strong currents make it impossible to send in divers. Even the equipment for underwater research has to be sturdy. Otherwise, the current will just wash it away. That's why the underwater river in the Black Sea was ideal for scientists to explore. Earth's oceans and seas are powerful. But lucky for us, there are places where divers can admire underwater rivers. Ever heard of a cenote? Sounds Spanish. Well, that's because it is. Cenotes are underground caves. They form after the limestone above collapses, revealing the groundwater under them. The term cenote is associated with the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Ancient Maya used them as water sources. In the Mayan language, the word cenote meant sacred well. Researchers estimate there are some 10,000 cenotes spread across the Yucatan Peninsula. You can also find them in other places, such as Cuba and Australia. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but unofficially, the most beautiful cenote is located just south of the town of Tulum in Mexico. The name reflects the cave's divine beauty, Cenote Angelita. But people don't visit this cenote to go swimming. Its bottom is much more interesting. A scuba tank is all you need to finally admire an underwater river firsthand. The waters are dark and foggy, so divers use powerful flashlights. After a hundred-foot dive, a marvelous sight appears. An underwater river with trees along its banks. Some of them even have green leaves, just like any other water flow on dry land. But it's not really a river. Here comes the fascinating part. Remember how salt water and fresh water don't mix? Well, the river the divers see is actually a thick layer of fog between the two types of water. Three feet of hydrogen sulfates, to be exact. This is the compound that water processing plants use to remove chlorine from drinking water. The substance is so heavy that the fog it produces moves independently from the surrounding water, and it creates an illusion that a river is flowing underwater. But there are other real rivers that play tricks on you. Take, for example, the Mystery River in Indiana. It's the longest underground river in the United States. Explorers discovered the river and its cave system, Blue Spring Caverns, in the 19th century. Nearly three miles of the river are navigable. Isn't that impressive? You can book a boat tour on a river that you can't even see. But the most mysterious river on the planet is the Saraswati River in India. The coolest part about it is that it doesn't exist. It was an alleged river only mentioned in ancient literature. For centuries, people thought that it was just a myth. Then satellite images showed that it might be real. 
Ancient texts spoke of a major confluence of three mighty rivers, the Ganges, Yamuna, and Saraswati. The first two are visible today, but where's the third one? That's what scientists decided to find out. Images from an American satellite showed the presence of underground water in the area. Until then, researchers thought that these were paleo channels. This simply means that water flowed through them a long time ago. But to their surprise, it appeared that there was still water inside these channels. Scientists estimated that the Saraswati River flowed above the ground some 5,000 years ago. But it didn't dry up completely. It just went underground, some 200 feet below the ground. Local experts believe that the river still slowly flows into the sea. The Saraswati River got hidden under the desert sand. This was a natural process, but many rivers have been forced underground because of human activity. In London, England, several dozen small and medium-sized rivers now flow under the ground. Maps from the 19th century still show them as rivers, but today they only exist in the names of the streets that were built above them, such as Fleet Street. The same thing happened in New York, but this doesn't mean that these streams have disappeared for good. When engineers want to rebuild or modify a building, they still consult city maps from centuries ago. No one wants a long-lost brook to flood their basement. The Amazon River travels through nine South American countries at a length of over 4,000 miles. Still, it's impossible to cross it by a bridge. With the river being the main highway, traveling through this dense forest, and so few areas populated around the river, there's just no reason to have one. The river can rise up to 30 feet, and the river crossings that were only 3 miles wide can expand to over 30 miles in just a few short weeks in certain spots, making a bridge nearly impossible to build here. In New Zealand, in the coastal town of Mauraki, there are huge spherical boulders. Some rocks are 6.5 feet tall and weigh about 7 tons, as much as 10 cows. Ooh, there's a 10-cow boulder! Maori legend has it that these rocks are from the remains of the goods from a large shipwreck that happened hundreds of years ago. From a more scientific perspective, it's sand and gravel combined to form these giant boulders. Waves and winds give them a smooth, round appearance over time. The whole process might take millions of years. Indonesia's Kaiwan Ijen volcano is famous for a stunning turquoise-colored lake sitting at the top of the peak, but don't dip in, it's an acid lake. But its scariest part is the sulfuric gases leaking out when lava flows freely, reaching temperatures hotter than 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. When those gases come in contact with the air, they combust into a spectacular electric blue flame. That's why the volcano has blue lava. The island of Surtsey, south of Iceland, was formed over 50 years ago by a volcanic eruption. It all began back in 1963, when a powerful volcanic eruption created one of the youngest islands on the planet. All sorts of bacteria, fungi, and molds began taking over the island, leading to numerous other animals finding their way here, like seals and birds. Birds and ocean waves deposited seeds all over the island. Sadly, the island's getting smaller now because of water and wind erosion. Located off the coast of Brazil, there's an island called… I'm a bit rusty on my Portuguese, so here it is on the screen. It looks perfectly untouched and pristine. Bad news? Dangerous snakes overrun it completely, so take a doctor with you in case you want to go there. Over 4,000 of the golden lancehead vipers inhabit this island. These 3-foot-long snakes are among the most venomous in the entire world. Yeah, I think I'll skip that. Landing down under, you can see the Opera House, Uluru, lots of kangaroos, and catch the strangest wave of the world, Wave Rock in Western Australia. It's not made of water, but stone. It can be up to 50 feet tall and almost 300 feet long. It's especially incredible after rains in winter, when the Western Australian wildflowers fill up the entire landscape. In Atlanta, there's a world of Coca-Cola Museum. The formula for the secret recipe is in a large security vault, heavily guarded at all times. Only a handful of people can get through those vault doors. Since its creation in 1886, the company has kept it a secret for only the most honest employees. In 2006, a former worker tried to sell the formula to Pepsi, only for Pepsi to call the police and inform Coca-Cola. The polka dot legs is a must for anyone who is in British Columbia. 
After the summer's scorching heat evaporates the lake's water, it leaves behind yellow, blue, and green water spots. These pools are full of all sorts of minerals, like sodium, calcium, and magnesium sulfates, that get concentrated in the pools. You can't get too close or even dip your feet into them. A fence protects the entire lake with a sign about how culturally and ecologically sensitive the area is. In Death Valley, California, there's a mystery of the sailing stones. Since the early 1900s, the mystery of how all these stones were seemingly moving by themselves across the desert floor baffled everyone. Some believe that the rocks move by thin pieces of ice around the stones pushed by winds after winter. No one ever saw any of these rocks moving until 2014. Scientists set time-lapse recorders, and the footage showed the rocks sliding along the ground over time. The marble caves in Chile, located in the beautiful area of Patagonia, formed from over 6,000 years of waves wearing down the rocks. The crystal blue walls reflect the vibrant turquoise water, making it perfect for kayaking. Walking in Chestnut Ridge Park in New York, one can see an eternal flame. What makes this one stand out, though, is it's underneath a waterfall. Occasionally, the flame will go out for short periods, but it will light up again. Sometimes it's thanks to certain hikers along the way. If you ever stop your car on a magnetic hill in New Brunswick, Canada, you'll see the car might start rolling backwards up the hill all by itself. While it looks like it's moving the wrong way, this is just an illusion. There are several hills like this all around the world. What looks like an incline is the opposite, all because there's no horizon for perspective. The brightest bioluminescent bay in the world, called Puerto Mosquito, is located off the coast of Puerto Rico. The bay is named for the pirate Roberto Cofrisi and his small boat El Mosquito, not after those annoying insects. During the summer months, you'll have glassy water at night with millions of tiny microorganisms bumping into each other and emitting blue light. The Chocolate Hills in the Philippines is a group of unusually shaped hills located in the middle of the island of Bohol in the Philippines. There are 1,000 to 2,000 discovered so far. They have nothing to do with chocolate at all, but they resemble the color after the dry season, when the grass turns from green to brown. In the northeastern part of Thailand, 466 miles away from Bangkok, is a 75-million-year-old rock formation sticking right out of the mountains. Their shapes look just like a pod of whales swimming together. No wonder this place is called Three Whale Rocks. Millions of years ago, this area was just a desert, but this land has changed quite dramatically during this time. These sandstone mountains were lifted up by plate tectonics, that's the shifting of the crust layers, called lithosphere, and erosion by the Mekong River, resulting in the strangely shaped rock formations we see today. Salar de Uni in Bolivia is the world's largest salt flat. At 4,050 square miles in size, it's twice as large as Grand Canyon National Park. After winter has passed, the Salt Lake is transformed into a beautiful giant sky-reflecting mirror between September and May. With salt all the way to the horizon, it creates an illusion of endlessness. The thin layer of water left over from ice melting creates a shimmering effect of the sky, making it one of the best places to visit in the world. The Catambo River in Venezuela might be the stormiest place in the world, with nearly 300 storm days a year. The lightning storms are so consistent, and they're predicted three months in advance. During the wet season in October, you might see 30 lightning flashes in a single minute. At sunset, strong winds flow around the three surrounding mountains, forming storm clouds over the water. When the water droplets of humid air collide with ice crystals from the cold air, the static charges cause a lightning storm that happens nearly every night. Off the southern tip of Japan lies the Yanaguni Formation. Archaeologists believe that the monument belongs to a fabled Pacific civilization, like Atlantis, that vanished beneath the waves thousands of years ago. If it's truly a lost civilization, or just nature having a little fun, this is the site to dive into. Features inside the structure resemble stonework, like castles, temples, and a stadium, connected by roads and what seems to be large walls all the way around. There are even marks in the stone that appear to show quarry work, faded faces, and rocks sculpted into animal shapes. Some scientists believe that the symmetry of the stones is not as straight as reported. It appears solid rock, rather than carved blocks, weathered down by all the water over many years. 
Splitvice Lakes National Park in Croatia is an interconnected chain of waterfalls, the tallest being 230 feet, and underground water channels, creating natural dams and lakes in such a picturesque environment. Found in the deep woodlands surrounded by meadows brimming with wildflowers, brown bears, gray wolves, lynx, deer, and plenty of rare bird species for bird watchers call these 115 square miles of the National Park home. No one expected such a strong storm. It's too dangerous to sail back to the land because of high waves and winds. But suddenly, you notice a small green island nearby. You and your friend are about 25 miles off the coast of Brazil. You were fishing and didn't notice black clouds obscuring the blue sky. You're approaching the unknown island and see a Coast Guard boat behind you. People from there are screaming something to you, but you can't make out the words because of the thunder. They tell us we should stay away from that island, your friend says. Despite the warning, you still sail since there's no other way out. Around the island, you notice sharp rocks sticking out of the water like knives in the dark. Now you realize what the Coast Guard warned about, but it's too late. Your boat hits a rock. The bottom is pierced. You start to sink. The rain and wind are getting stronger both of you fall overboard. Then darkness comes. You wake up in the morning because of the scorching sun and a dry mouth. Your friend and the wrecked boat are lying nearby. Apparently, you'll have to wait for rescuers to get out here. Now in the light of day, you can see how dangerous the island's coast is. It's surrounded by rocks and you're lucky you've survived. Getting out of here will be difficult. Together with your companion, you decide to look for coconuts and bananas. Your friend goes to the wreckage and pulls out a bag of medicine. Then, both of you leave the sandy beach and enter the dense jungle. A couple of steps later, you hear a strange hiss. You see your friend. His eyes are filled with horror. Goosebumps run down your back. You feel something alive crawling under your feet, and there's a lot of it. You look down and notice slithering snakes. There are dozens of them. They wrap around your legs, get into trees. They're everywhere. Don't move, your friend says. I think I know where we are. You want to ask him a question, but fear takes away your voice. He reads your face and answers the question. We're in one of the most dangerous places on Earth, the Brazilian Snake Island. These are not just some ordinary snakes. This is the Golden Lancehead, one of the most venomous reptiles in the world. You can find them nowhere else on the planet except for this land. They evolved here naturally, without other snake species intervention. That made their venom five times stronger than the venom of ordinary vipers. They're practically the only owners of this island. Nowhere else in the world will you find such a concentration of creeping reptiles on such a small piece of land. And now, they're glad that two big lunch meals have arrived. There's little chance of survival, but you're gonna try. The first thing you need to do is get out of your stupor and find a thick stick. This is your best tool right now. If you encounter a venomous snake, the best you can do is retreat slowly. But this time, there are too many of them. They're aggressive and hungry. Together with your friend, you fight off the snakes with a stick. But there's more and more of them coming. One of them falls on your shoulder from a tree and bites your neck. The poison instantly enters your bloodstream and affects your muscles. It feels like your body is melting. It becomes difficult to move and your neck swells. Your friend grabs you and carries you deep into the jungle. Here among the trees, you notice an old lighthouse. Yeah, this building really stands out here. Once a year, the Coast Guard visits it. Your friend breaks down the door and puts you on the floor. You're afraid you won't be able to survive the bite. Fortunately, your friend is a doctor. He injects the necessary medicine and saves your life. You have a few minutes to rest before more danger arises. Your friend tells you that the unique snakes appeared here thousands of years ago. This island was part of Brazil for a long time. Then, massive floods separated it from the continent. This part of the land was cut off from the whole world which helped the formation of a unique ecosystem inside. Vipers that lived here evolved into golden lanceheads. They quickly became the main masters of the island and destroyed all the other animals. But how did they manage to survive without food, cut off from the whole world? 
They did it thanks to nature and evolution. This island is a transit point for many birds. They stop here to rest during long flights. These birds become dinner for the snakes. Previously, a snake bite almost didn't harm the birds. They were frightened and flew away, leaving the snake without food. But over years of evolution, the island's owners have developed such a potent poison that one bite was enough for a bird to never take off again. There's also a legend that a pirate hid treasures here a long time ago. And so that no one would ever find it, he brought snakes to guard his gold. Of course, there's no chest with coins here, but the island is attractive for modern pirates, even today. Golden lancehead snakes are an expensive commodity, so bad people often visit this place to hunt the reptiles. That's why the Coast Guard is always on duty around the island. People are forbidden to visit this place. And even if someone manages to get past the guards, they will have to face the rocks. Only biologists and scientists have permission to study the local fauna. A necessary condition for a visit is a doctor's presence in the team, so they can save people from the snake's poison. So we have pirates and hordes of poisonous snakes, but there's something else that makes the island even worse. At this moment, you hear rustling all over the building. Thousands of little paws are tapping on the walls and floor. You look around and see lots of giant cockroaches. Some of them are half the size of your palm. They crawl under your clothes. You and your friends scream in fear and run out of the lighthouse. Quickly, you reach the shore and fall into the water. It seems that not a single cockroach is left under your shirt. But that's not all. You hear a strange buzzing sound. You look around and see a dark cloud of flying beetles forming in the sky. It's locusts! Thousands of flying insects are heading in your direction. To avoid a collision, you dive under the water and wait for the cloud to pass by. You go up to the surface and move to the shore. Fortunately, there are almost no snakes here. You and your friend are afraid to approach the jungle and wait for several hours until rescuers arrive. You're nervously painting a pattern on the sand and make a promise that you'll never revisit this place. Finally, you see the lifeguard boat. You're trying to tell them you got here by accident. They believe you and evacuate you from the island. While you're sailing away, you think about what would happen if many poisonous snakes appeared in a village or a small town. It's difficult to imagine what kind of problems people would face. But in fact, there's no need to imagine anything. There is a place on the planet where locals live next to poisonous cobras, but it doesn't create any chaos. A human can live in peace and harmony with reptiles in that village. Welcome to Shetpal village in India. This place has a population of about 2,600, and it's located in the jungle. It's hot here. Locals are friendly and responsive. If you go into one of the houses, you'll see something <gasps> that seems impossible. The King Cobra, whose venom is one of the most dangerous in the world, calmly crawls around furniture and eats eggs and meat that people give. There's even a special corner for the reptile to relax from the scorching sun, drink water, and have a snack. People are happy about the cobra, as if it was a pet. In the village, cobras are everywhere. They come into houses and schools, crawl through the streets, and keep company during dinner. The locals consider them full-fledged residents. They adore them. The snakes are also used to people and don't see them as dangerous. The coolest thing is there has never been a tragic case in the village because of a poisonous bite. There's no other place in the world where cobras live in such harmony with people.